Um, okay, so next up is uh, Peter Sievers from Juniper, and he's going to show you how to get data out of a device in a vendor-neutral way. Have fun. Welcome. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Peter Sievers. I'm a system engineer for working with Juniper in Germany. My customer focus is uh, service provider and carrier, and I think this topic is yeah, should be very interested. Um, because um, the modern way how to get, let's say, uh, uh, metrics out of your box should not be SNMP-based, it should be in another fashion. And I will go um, over some, uh, let's say, um, data model-driven possibilities to get data out of the box. Um, my talk is divided into two parts. First, a little bit more of theory. I don't know if everyone here is aware of OpenConfig and let's say, a modern art from RPC calls like gRPC and is aware of um, telemetry data. And the second part is I've done, a, uh, let's say, a little bit research on the current uh, BGP full table for version 4 and version 6. And I've done some analytics with mathematical models and um, hopefully I have time enough to present what I've, well, let's say, find or not find or how to, let's say, model data um, in a way that you, you maybe can predict future values or find anomalies in your routing information. That's um, a brief overview over the agenda. First, open configs and gRPC and protocol buffer. Um, then uh, why it's important to have data models these days, because um, now, today still people sitting in front of the CLI, but uh, even in machine-to-machine uh, -machine communication, in automation, you normally have APIs and you want to have interaction between systems without CLI interaction. You use mainly as a CLI for debugging, debugging purpose and not for configuring boxes these days anymore. If you do still so, maybe you should think about it a little bit. And after that, um, my example is based on uh, open source software, the tick stack, telegraph, uh, influx DB, chronograph and capacitor. You can use whatever software you like. So the Prometheus community here could use Prometheus and you could use Kafka message bus system as well. So it's only an ex example, no recommendation from my side. And um, after that, I will go over a little bit of a statistical model, how, yeah, how to find maybe anomalies or outliers within your metrics. Open config. So open config is um, an initiative from network operators, um, from you, but uh, not many of you are now within this um, operation group. So I see Telecom, maybe uh, the guy from Telecom can comment if he's involved in that project, and Malta from uh, uh, GoDaddy, maybe. But um, in, the first, uh, in the beginning, Google was the main driver for this, and the idea is to have vendor-neutral data models. So today, for every vendor, you have to learn a language, and have to integrate it in your NMS systems and in your OSS, BSS systems. And yeah, that costs a lot of money and took a lot of time. And if you want to change maybe the vendor from one vendor A to vendor B, it is even more complex and uh, cost in, in, um, costs a lot of money. So therefore, the idea is to have independent um, vendor neutral um, modeling languages, which is on the one hand for configuring the boxes, and on the other end for getting state information out of the box via RPC calls or via notifications, event notifications, for example. So um, as I mentioned before, it's very important to have these days programmatic interfaces on your boxes and um, to change your network very dynamically. So based on these needs, the data models has been defined by the open config initiative. So it is not that a vendor is in there in this group, so it's a community-driven effort and it is um, aligned to the use cases they would like to implement. Next slide will show um, um, which, let's say, data models are available or um, has, has been defined by this uh, community. And um, at the end, we, we as a vendor has, have to implement these models or we don't have, but then they will not buy our boxes anymore. So we have an interest to implement these models. And there are different ways to implement, uh, let's say, young models. If you have, if you have as a vendor, um, data model-driven 
let's say, operating system, then it's not a big change in your, in your internal architecture to, to adapt to open config models. Another thing is um, open config models are published on GitHub, so it's very fast. Maybe other than in the IETF, where also young models are defined, um, open config has, is very more up to speed in terms of defining uh, the, the data models. As I mentioned before, this is um, public available on GitHub. It's a screenshot from what is available today. So you see the most important things are there. And um, to be honest, I think the very specific vendor knobs will never be in these data models be described. Therefore, it is, as I mentioned before, um, it's oriented at uh, use cases and not by we are driving you in such a vendor lock-in case or something else. So um, if you see um, BGP is there, interfaces there, platform policy frameworks, so all the important stuff for inter-BGP routing and interfaces is defined and it's also defined for configuration and for state as I mentioned before. So in modern networks when you interact with the network element, you check maybe via gRPC, which I will explain later on, um, um, if the configuration is properly applied and you get um, over the session, the information, yes, RS number is correct, programmed, and so on. A quick example, so the problem statement, or what's the problem today, you have different vendor CLIs, like here, um, and you configure the AS number in four different ways, so each vendor has this yeah, individual configuration and command syntax, and um, yeah, as I mentioned before, NMS systems has to adapt to all these models. You have to integrate them. And maybe if you change from one version on a vendor to a, let's say, kindly newer operating system version, maybe it changed within a vendor itself that the, um, that the configuration statement is done in another way. So the goal there is, if I use an open config data model, to have one statement for all these vendor boxes. You can see here a prefix called open config dash BGP, and behind this you configure the AS number in the same fashion on all of these four vendor boxes, which will adapt, or which have included the open uh, config data models for BGP. So if you asked, maybe in an ROC or so, don't ask for generally open config support, ask for which models are supported. So that is important to know you, not that is in general supported. So if you want to configure these or in these ways, your boxes in the future. Um, because I'm from Juniper, I've done some examples because it's not in the future that we will implement open, um, young models for open config. We have implemented them. It depends on the Juno's version, sure, you will use on your routers. As you can see in this example, we are adding a prefix before the configuration statement, uh, statement within the CLI so that you can have in parallel the old way, our own data model and the open config data model on the same box. That's normally not a good idea to do so. So when you decide to go the, the way open config, you should all use open config for every configuration statement which is available. Mixing things up could yeah, break the box and that will break the internet and that's not good. So, so um, as you see below, in our implementation, um, we use translation scripts. So we, at the end of the day, we will translate the open config context in our own data modeling language. And therefore, yeah, it was not a big deal. It's very flexible. But as I mentioned before, if you go both ways, it could end up in a bad situation in which you don't want to be in. Coming um, a little bit more to Telemetry, because as I mentioned before, open config can be used to configure the box, to get states, but also for telemetry. Telemetry is uh, out there now for some years, so it's maybe not new to you, maybe new to some of you. Telemetry means, therefore, I will not push or pull data via SNMP from your uh, network elements. Uh, with telemetry, you push normally data out of the box, and every let's say every um, 
binary running on your router or switch or whatever you use is able to provide metrics. So maybe the line card itself is able to push out metrics. It's not over a central process running on the routing engine like SNMP, which collects data and then um, yeah, will be pulled by, by, by a cron job from your, from your analytics system. So pushing is more um, um, the way telemetry works and it's definitely scales better than pulling with SNMP, I think you all will agree on that. Even if you have thousands of interfaces in your router or sub-interfaces, it could be a problem to, to run every five minutes through the whole getting uh, metrics out of the box and you have um, leaking metrics data within your database and all that kind of problems. So with telemetry, we will do things in another way. And with open config telemetry, it comes on top, the data model driven, um, way to do modern, uh, let's say, uh, programming and getting state out of, out of the box. Data model driven because I model the RPC call and the information within a young um, data model file, how to get to uh, which data out of the box. If I consume all this data, or I have a, it's, a, it's a client server connection with OpenConfig using gRPC as seen Below gRPC, I will explain on the next slides. The server will push to the subscriber. The subscriber is a client software which has subscribed to, to the router and for, subscribed for, let's say, different sensor information. And this subscriber will get these sensor information out of the box. And then you have, if you will scale very high, should use, um, you should use the message bus um, way, push out the information to the message bus system like Kafka. And there you could have on the Casca bus more applications, applications which are li listening to these kind of um, metrics and maybe have an alarming based on metrics, SLR me measurement, performance measurement, event notification. In my example later on, I'm using a time series based database directly. I've, as I mentioned before, I've used InfluxDB and I write from, let's say, the client directly the metrics to the time series database. And there you can use your Grafana dashboards, Chronograph dashboards, whatever you like, and build around these database your alarming or monitoring functions dashboards. So, an example how um, uh, telemetry sensor um, is modeled uh, with OpenConfig is this one. It's a JSON file. I've grabbed only the pass information. There is the vendor pass you can see here. And um, I'm subscribing for a protocol BGP a peer group, then a specific peer group upstream. So you can, it's a clear hierarchy. You can subscribe for all BGP messages. You can subscribe for a specific neighbor. Um, it depends on what your client is interest, interested in uh, to get um, the telemetry data out of the box. And, on the left side, you see an, an answer. I've converted it into JSON format. That's also possible. Um, the streaming itself is normally in protocol buffer. And uh, some people, because it's faster on the line. So um, definitely it's binary encoding and uh, faster than streaming with JSON or XML directly. These data out of the box, you normally use these days protocol buffers for that. And, um, if you would like to convert it into JSON, the client is able to convert it back to JSON, and there you see the AS number, which is configured, uh, the local AS number, and which type. It's only a small snippet from what information you get out of these um, telemetry then or paths I've configured here. And it, also, it should show you that it's not only to um, telemetry data like metrics. It's also what you have configured on the box. Therefore, I've, um, I've given this example here. Um, furthermore, telemetry is able to pull or yeah, to pull large amounts of data close to real time, whatever real time is. Um, so you, nevertheless, you should care about if you want to have 10 milliseconds or 30 milliseconds, but it's, everything is better than SNMP, let's say like this. So, but uh, depending on the count of interfaces you have in the system and the count of uh, sensor information you subscribe to, you should, yeah, 
have it in a good balance. Let's keep it like that. So there is no general rule of thumb where you say, hey, 10 seconds if I have 100 interfaces, but yeah, you have maybe do a proof of concept or try in your lab what the effect is on, on the router. The, the CPU footprint is very small with gRPC and a protocol buffer, which you will see later on in the next slides. Uh, just another example, um, we can go quickly over it where you see some other um, information. Here is um, the metric received prefixes, which I use later on in my, let's say, more practical example when I export this information to the um, Influx database and uh, use it for statistical analytics. So, therefore, I've mentioned it again here. But you see also send prefix and installed. Um, you can see um, it's, it's not so bad to have these both metrics, so the first operation could be, oh, I've received such prefixes and I've installed only the half of these prefixes, what's wrong, or can deeper look into why, um, yeah, why you have only installed the, the half of the prefixes into the FIP. So here's only one prefix missing, so it's working great and all are accepted because also, if it's not accepted because of wrong next stop or whatever policy will force um, the BGP process to not accept these uh, next stop, for example. Short overview over gRPC. gRPC, as the um, name might uh, yeah, put you uh, into the thinking that it comes from Google. Yeah, it comes from Google. The code name was StubbyRPC. These days, they um, deny that the G stands for Google, therefore, on the GitHub page is, a, a, depending on the version which was announced, a different name for the G, so the G is a generic, it's a G, so. But RPC, the concept of RPC is uh, quite long time uh, well known, so it's nothing new, but new in, in this implementation is that we use for transport HTTP2, um, we have integrated uh, security authentication with certificates, and encryption with um, TLS uh, integration, and um, the gRPC itself is layered and uses HTTP2. HTTP2 is interesting because um, it is uh, able to have full duplex um, bidirectional, uh, allows full duplex bidirectional communication, which is other in HTTP1.1, where it is, yeah, yeah, there you can use pipelining or web sockets, but the issue with that, you can have still head of line blocking events, so you, you really not have a protocol which is full duplex um, working in bidirectional communication. With this bidirectional communication, um, it allows that the TCP connection, which is used to, to connect between the network element and um, the client is able to stream first of all in both directions using the same TCP session and uh, bi bidirectional. So there is no need to wait for another, let's say, uh, HTTP header to be processed. It can do um, binary streaming directly. So and that is very important if you have, for example, as uh, encoding protocol buffer, which is one layer on the layered RPC uh, um, protocol design. The next layer is the, uh, the mapping of the RPC call. I have um, later on an, um, an Wireshark screenshot where you can exactly see which layer is used for what and which RPC call. Um, the interface description lang language um, yep, defines what is in the, the services which are defined as a protocol buffer. I have a slide on the next. Um, I have a next slide where you can see the service definitions here. It is for Junos, directly for our Junos uh, routers, where we uh, define the service open config telemetry and place a RPC command which subscribes to a specific RPC call. Um, mentioned there, um, maybe you also have heard of GNMI because this is specific to Juniper. It looks a little bit different with Cisco and Arista. So the idea of open config is, is, is to have everything the same. So the next step would be GNMI, which is um, gRPC network management interface to have the same RPC calls. The journal, it's normally subscribed, it's uh, get data, it's set data, um, similar over all vendors. So that's the next, let's say, thing which will be implemented and will be implemented by us and other vendors 
to be compliant with that was uh, what uh, OpenConfig um, tries to achieve. You can see um, down there um, a dot proto file which defines strings to numbers and that's the idea of protocol buffers. Instead of transporting the string over the line, you transport the number and therefore you can serialize it very good and therefore protocol buffer allows the network processor on the line card directly to export these um, data in a, in a very efficient way. So it's the size on the wire, as you see below, is minimal. It's far, far less than um, JSON or XML. So in future, you should consider definitely to use gRPC together with protocol buffer to communicate and get information out of your routers to be efficient and yeah, you can scale very high with that kind of um, implementation. Also protocol buffer is uh, internally uh, implemented and developed by Google. So um, it is not one-to-one -one bind to gRPC. You could also use in, in theory C uh, gRPC together with JSON or XML, but uh, the best match is use protocol buffer. Data models, a short overview over data models, um, because um, as I mentioned in the beginning, data models are key for automation. If you are not able to get information out of a box, out of the box um, of the networking gear um, without a, yeah, a good plan or a, a described model where to access data, how can I get this data out of the box, it, is, it will mess up in, in CLI screen scraping and all that kind of stuff you have done in the past. So the change is really use data models to interact with the box. These data models can be integrated in your anonymous systems and could be integrated in other automation solutions which will interact later on with network devices. Therefore, data modeling is important, and Young is one of the, um, yeah, developed by, by the IETF in, in the working group, um, working group, let's see that, uh, NetMod working group, so it's in different versions available. Uh, it describes how you have to uh, define these data models within a, a Young file, and um, as mentioned before, you configure um, either um, state data and configuration data in the same um, modeling file. So it's not a separate file for, let's say, configuration data and state data, it's the same file. Um, you can see later on an example where I've then written state data is normally a, a value you can read only, not write, and configuration data is readable and writable. Young models um, can be categorized by different entities who define them, IETF, as mentioned before, and in the IETF, you can think of um, young models as a next generation of structured management interface. Uh, so that kind of, you know, from SNMP with MIPS and ASN1 uh, notation, you, um, yeah, you move in the new world where it's a young data model and it's not uh, SNMP anymore, it's either NetConf then or G GRPC. And IETF still defines young models, OpenConfig defines young model. We have vendor specific young models and you as a customer can define your own data models. You can augment, deviate, import uh, existing data models from OpenConfig for example and then you create or new container within the data models. You can also um, also um, convert these data models files into um, an XML uh, um, notation uh, then called yin, therefore yin and yang, so uh, both together young models converted to XML um, structured model. A definition, young definition statement, you have a hierarchy, as I mentioned before, it's, you have the grouping function, you can use um, inheritance there, so you can group something together and use the group in another file. You have containers, as you can see here, a container for BGP and under the BGP context, um, you have global or neighbors or peer groups. That's similar to, to our way, how we configure in our data models today, BGP. And 
yeah, this is uh, the hierarchy or a snippet from OpenConfig BGP for, for young models. You also have leaves. Um, contain, container itself has no, let's say, data value. A container is, uh, has uh, leaves under it or lists, but uh, no data value itself. The data node leaf is uh, defined by an identifier and um, yeah, has, for example, a mandatory attribute. Um, you also have some um, uh, different ways of uh, data types available in, in Young, all integer, float, boolean, all these kind of data types are available for, for Young models. So, um, yeah, if you would like to write your own models, go to maybe the GitHub side of OpenConfig, look at what's there and adapt. So I will skip a little bit because I'm short on time. Um, I've mentioned uh, young augmentation and deviation, so you can use um, a base schema from ITF, OpenConfig, or your custom, or a vendor custom, or your custom, and uh, add new container leaves or descriptions. It's in a new file, so you edit not the existing file, you will define a new file. The namespace which you are using should be unique within your domain so that there is no collision with other vendors. Or as you see, have seen before with OpenConfig, there is always this prefix before or OC. And you should do it in the same fashion for if you define your own schemas. Example uh, from uh, an interesting tool is uh, Payang. Payang validates uh, Young models. If you write really your own Young model, you can validate it with this uh, Python software. You, uh, it's free available on um, GitHub available, and you can uh, validate it against the RFC, which is written from the ITF. Or you can also convert or the, um, uh, show the structure in a tree format, like you see below. So there's a tutorial available, so if you would like to go deeper in building your own young models, use uh, this tutorial and yeah, keep on doing. A Ying notation, there is, yeah, you can see where I've uh, converted the open config BGP young with this parameter into, for this specific pass, into a XML output. So that's nothing more. This is a uh, Wireshark output from uh, gRPC communication. I uh, will quickly show here, you see the headers, the stream information which will subscribe to the RPC call is here. TeramPT open config, TeramPT subscribe request. So this is a client request towards the network element. You have different um, options given here if it is uh, encrypted and so on. So don't use no encryption in your network. I have used no encryption in my demo lab because it's okay and then I can show you such things, but if you want to go live with gRPC, use uh, encryption, please. Also an example I've, um, with the data, um, uh, data sent over uh, the wire, so I've shown you the header that it is stream three and here you see data streams for stream three. And the good thing is you don't have to repeat and wait like in REST and JSON to build the header and send the packet. You have once built the header for HTTP2 and after that you can send pure data out of the box. So no header, waiting for building header and putting things together and bringing these out of the box. So it's very efficient as mentioned before. Tick stack. Um, Example for, for Junos, we have a module, open config telemetry module available for, for um, Telegraph. It's an example for a sensor for protocol BGP. 10 milliseconds is the frequency when I subscribe to this sensor. There is a configuration example, what you have to configure on your box. So you can defin define the TCP port on which the router should listen and yeah, as mentioned before, I've used clear text here, but don't do that at home or you see then there is a TCP session and it will keep one TCP session no matter how many sender you apply to or what you will do over this gRPC session, it will stay one TCP session. So no overhead in building new TCP sessions and uh, sliding window effects and all that kind of stuff you don't like with TCP. And uh, later on, um, you see when you subscribe to this sensor, there will be config pushed, um, which will activate then the configuration on, um, on the router. The format is GP uh, Google 
protocol buffer, as uh, explained before. This is for the daemon RPD. This is uh, the daemon which is at with Juniper routers responsible for routing information. And uh, the configuration which is necessary is not put in the normal configuration tree. It is put in the ephemeral database, so there is no commit necessary to bring that live. Um, in my example, I use capacitor. Capacitor, short words of that, if you have not worked with the tick stack, is uh, responsible for data processing um, and creates alerts and can uh, yeah, do jobs. For example, I've done some, so the idea is I've exported the received routes into the, the um, influx database. I've now all uh, received route there in a time frame from uh, 10 milliseconds, so many, many values. And I run now some batch process to analyze these data and to calculate um, um, to, to calculate a model based on the historical data. So I run a Python script um, which analyzes the data and builds um, such called pickle files where the model or the data is described. And I use some two algorithms for that. The three sigma algorithm and um, one clustering algorithm K means to yeah, to, it's good first to have structured data so you can work very easily with these two algorithms to yeah, build the model based on the historical data. Only an example how it looks on capacitor if you would like to do it um, on your own there. So I definitely have to run through. I've mentioned these two algorithms now. Um, an example, um, what does that mean if I say I calculate a model for the historical data? For example, here I've um, um, calculated um, a pickle file. Pickle is, um, uh, if you have worked with, pun, uh, with Python and some, let's say, machine learning stuff around Python, it is um, um, a processing engine to process structured data, data frames. And um, in this example, you see the average. I've calculated an average for every hour for one day and calculated the standard deviation from um, the average. Standard deviation, three sigma means standard deviation, um, three, because three times the standard deviation. And the idea is to identify anomalies, because normally you have very, uh, you have up and downs in your, in your received routes, but uh, sometimes it could be an, uh, have an impact, sometimes not, so you will reduce the noise, let's call it like that, and you are only interested in um, yeah, what could be a normal with your route, received route information. And therefore, I've done this calculation, uh, calculated the standard deviation, and now the idea is to compare a new value in that specific time slot and uh, yeah, compare it if it is in the three sigma, three times the standard deviation towards the mean. That is the idea. If it's in between, it's normal. If it's outside, it's unnormal. It's a, an anomaly. The same, um, only to visualize what does clustering mean. That is from, that's real data from the internet. As you can see here, we are roughly about, what is it? Seven, seven, six, nine thousand before routes and I've clustered, K means I built K clusters, K is the amount of clusters, I define it myself, I say I will have three clusters and then I will calculate the cluster centroids. That can you also do with these nice Python images. And with the cluster centroids available, you will calculate an inter-cluster threshold and compare it again, so you will be maybe able to find anomalies within your data you have received for received routes. It's time, time, time. So it's for one hour. So that was an, uh, uh, can I go back? This is uh, the time axis uh, down there, but it's, it's not in, uh, it's in Unix timestamp. So I've, you can, normally you will take, um, that's very important if you think how to model or show historical data. Normally you will not take one day back, you will take one week back and aggregate these days because you have normally in your data um, some kind of um, 
um, um, seasonality or so. Even in BGP routing, there seems to be some kind of seasonality. In interface traffic, you definitely, uh, definitely have. But therefore, you uh, normally take not one time, you take more. So, in, I will go over very fast. I have only two slides now at the end of the talk. Sorry, I have spent too much time on open config. The interesting part is the second part. Sorry for that. So um, if you are interested in what I've done with these kind of metrics and how to correlate or analyze it, um, we can have a talk later on. So that was everything from my side. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much, Peter.